What are three steps to transition a cool season bed into a warm season bed? That's what we're gonna do together in this video. As you can see, I'm already kinda halfway there, but I paused it so that I could bring you along the journey and show you what to do in your garden too. So let's transition your bed from one season to the next. Welcome to the Gardenary channel. Garden plus ordinary equals gardenary. So whether you're a beginner gardener or a garden pro ready to start your own garden coach business or somewhere in between, there's a place for you here at Gardenary. So subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell so that you get a notification every time we drop a new video like this one today. And now let's dig into how to transition a garden from one season to the next. Let's do it. Okay. So it is June and I am, no, it's July. I am super late in transitioning this garden, but you know what I like to say? Better late than never, all right? So we're gonna go for it. I love experimenting in the garden and pushing my limits. And you know, I'm busy. I love talking about the fact that I don't have a garden that I tend for hours and hours every day. As a mom of four kids, as an owner of two businesses, I come out here for a couple hours a week. So I do what I can and I wanna encourage you to do that as well. So I'm a little behind, but we're gonna catch up fast here. Are you ready? So what we have here are the remains of my salad garden. So I had salad growing in here. We planted this before the threat of frost passed at the end of February. Ate lettuce every single day out of this garden. And as you can see, what's happening here is these lettuce plants are doing what we call bolting. So you'll start to see this in most of your cool season plants. When it gets too hot, like it is now, we're in the 80s here in the Chicago area, these little girls know that it is not the optimal weather for them to do their best growing. So what they're all trying to do is go to seed. The way they go to seed is they send up a strong center stalk and then right at the tip, they will start to produce flowers and inside of those flowers will be hundreds of seeds. So one thing you can do, I will put this caveat in here, if you want to be a seed saver and uh, create your own seed for the next season, I think that's totally amazing. And oftentimes I'll do that with at least one plant. So I'll leave one of my best performing plants in the garden and let it go completely to seed, cover the seed head up with a brown bag, collect that seed and then plant it again. Or even what you can do is literally let this little girl go wild and it will drop the seeds for you. It's pretty cool. Think about nature guys. All right, so you can leave one to go completely to seed um, to either collect or reseed itself in the bed. But for these others, um, I'm not gonna do that. I am going to instead cut them. Now, I like to use what I call a modified no-dig method. So back in the day, um, or some farming methods, the idea is you pull everything completely up out of the soil, and then you till the soil up, and then you plant back into it. Now, there's really a new, I don't know if it's new, I think it's older, maybe it's like even before the tilling started, and it's called the no-dig method. And the, the idea behind the philosophy is that there is so much life, there's so many microorganisms, there's so much happening right below the soil surface that when we yank up these plants that have been thriving and growing in this space, we're literally like tearing up worlds, like there's so many worlds underneath the soil that we're destroying when we do this. So this is a much more sympathetic way of gardening. It's like going, okay guys, thank you so much for keeping my soil so healthy. I'm gonna let you continue doing your thing and I'm just gonna you know, get the plant up from the surface. So that's the way I like to grow in the garden rather than uprooting the whole thing. I just literally come to the base of these plants and I just cut right at the base. Now, I posted this um, before and was asked, so will those plants regrow the ones you're cutting from the base? And these will not because these are annual plants. So as soon as I cut off the leaf of this, the leaf supply of this plant, this plant is no longer gonna, gonna be able to photosynthesize. So you can see what this, this is an oak leaf lettuce. And you can see, isn't that amazing? It literally is becoming huge and ready to produce seed. So I've just cut it right at the base and then I'm gonna leave the bottom of the plant there in the soil and, um, and really preserve all of the life and the work that's been going on during this time when the plant was growing. So that's step one, is to simply cut. Now you wanna be careful if there are plants that you wanna keep in. So for instance, I have this nasturtium 
I definitely want to keep my nasturtium growing because it can, it needs a little bit more space, but it can definitely survive this new season. I'm going to keep my cilantro because this is flowering and it's going to turn to coriander, which I love. So you can be selective of what you want to pull out and what you want to keep. It doesn't have to be a clean sweep. We're not farming here. So that's the beauty of the kitchen garden is you can pull a few things, leave a few things and just kind of experiment. So that's step one. The second step is I'm going to come in with some mushroom compost and I'm going to add two to three inches of new compost right on top of everything I've just pulled. Now, a step I guess I should put in here, a 1.5, would be to clear any debris. So after I've cut, it is a good idea, since you've exposed this soil, to just kind of rake through the surface. Make sure you don't see any, you know, caterpillars, cabbage loopers, slugs, snails. This is a very good time to just kind of, you know, clean out, clean house here and make sure you don't see any creepy crawly things that are gonna affect your next season's plants. So that's the 1.5. So two, you're gonna add your compost. So we're gonna put two to three inches direct onto the soil top. We're not gonna mix it in. We're just gonna lay it on top just like what would happen in nature if these plants were to have time to naturally decompose. They would just drop onto the soil break down and create this nice decomposed matter. That's what we're recreating when we add our compost, our two to three inches. And then the third step is to plant the next set of plants. So what I've been doing is adding these trellises because I'm gonna attempt to grow vining cucumbers up these trellises. Now, like I said, I'm a little bit late in doing so, but the cucumbers that I'm gonna be planting are 60 day cucumbers. So this is the beginning of July, so that means I've got all July and August to grow cucumbers, which I I know after gardening here in Chicago for a few years, I'm gonna have tons of sunshine for the next two months, lots of heat. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to make my cucumber dreams happen. So you wanna add any, any climbing structures, anything you're gonna need for the next season's plants. I didn't need these trellises for my lettuces because they don't need a trellis. They don't vine and they're just simple little bushy plants, but I will definitely need them for my cucumbers. So those are the three steps, as simple as that. So cut from the base. The 1.5 is make sure you clear it, take care of any insect issues that you've got. Add a layer of two to three um, inches of compost. I love using mushroom compost. And then add any climbing structures, anything you're gonna need to support your next set of plants and then plant up for the following season. So for me, that's gonna be warm season and my family loves cucumbers, so we're gonna grow as many as possible. That, my friends, is how you transition from one season to the next. The thing I love about the kitchen garden and the gardenary philosophy is we really encourage you to make the most of every single day in your garden, to not follow what the marketing guides us to. If you follow the commercials, you're gonna think the only time to plant is in the spring. But the truth is that we can be planting every single week in the kitchen garden all the way up to when it's covered with snow. So don't waste a moment. Make sure you transition your garden, even if you're late like me. And uh, thanks so much for bringing back the kitchen garden with me. Don't forget to check out the Green Thumb Quiz. Our super fun quiz will help you discover where you are in your own gardening journey and give you free resources to grow you to the next level. So check it out at the bottom of this video. And let me know in the comments if you have questions about transitioning a garden from one season to the next one. I'll see you next time.